and welcome to Warwick iCast. This week I'm at Warwick's International Automotive Research Centre where engineers with the help of longtime partners Jaguar are analysing onboard computer diagnostic systems and researching the possibility that a car can not only diagnose a fault but then fix it. Ultimately the goal is to produce a self-healing car. For car manufacturers, having to recall hundreds of thousands of vehicles worldwide due to minor electrical faults can cost millions of pounds and cause bad publicity. Premium brands like Mercedes, BMW and Jaguar use increasingly complex and expensive computer systems to keep their cars running smoothly. Now experts at the School of Engineering are working on improving the system's performance to provide ever more accurate and useful information. Dr Peter Jones is the principal investigator for this project. Three or four years ago, the University of Warwick, WMG, um, in collaboration with Jaguar and Land Rover, established a research project funded by Adventist West Midlands. This research project was the Premium Automotive Research and Development Programme. Um, within that programme, there were four projects in the area of um, electrical and electronic systems in automobiles. We were working with the company and with their supply base to look at better ways of um, engineering these systems. It's motivated by the fact that since the mid-80s there has been a tremendous growth in the electronic content in vehicles. Currently, across the globe, all of the manufacturers are spending a significant amount of money, which goes into billions of US dollars a year, on warranty claims. So an attempt to actually reduce the possibility of electronics contributing to warranty claims um, essentially motivates this work. And the key to that is the ability to, to provide diagnostic tools that can be used in product development to prevent issues arising in the market, and when they arise, to provide the technicians with the tools that can enable them to actually diagnose the faults and repair them quickly, and more importantly, in the longer term, to enable the vehicle to have its own um, self-diagnostic capability such as it is capable of repairing itself insofar as the electronics and software are concerned without the need for the vehicle to return to the, um, to, 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 to the service bay. For car manufacturers, being able to provide the customer with a fault-free vehicle and therefore cheaper warranty costs means investing in this type of research is vital. Peter Earp is the Electrical Integration Manager at Jaguar. Clearly, you know, warranties are an important subject for us and um, in many cases it, it, it is part of the purchasing decision for a customer. Uh, what we're trying to do here is, as I say, put the diagnostics uh, in the background and let the vehicle take control and in, in that way hopefully you know, reduce any incidence of diagnostics that the customer would see. Diagnostics is, is always an overhead, it's something that we design into the vehicle hopefully to uh, mitigate any issues that a customer may have and therefore um, it is something that yes it, it costs money to, to design diagnostics in. We want a, a customer to take a vehicle and never have a problem with it. Now we know that's our aspiration and we know the reality today is sometimes different to that for most car manufacturers and the research that we're doing here is really looking at new ways of implementing diagnostics within the vehicle such that if a problem arises on a vehicle maybe the vehicle could detect that at different levels and take appropriate action. Now it's, it's not a, a new technique in terms of the barrier we're trying to break down but we're probably trying to take it to a, a new level than we've done before. I think working with the university gives us a unique opportunity that we can expand the work that we would normally do within our own design centres and take a slightly uh, more far-reaching view and sometimes give us the extra space and uh, academic ability to venture into new territory. One of the principal engineers for this project is Mark A. Morsegan. So you get to look at cars like this all the time. What's actually going on electronically underneath all this fascia? The styling and the sophisticated interior uh, hides an awful lot of technology hidden underneath. Uh, if you were to take the dashboard and the, the trim panels away, you'd find that this vehicle, particularly premium automotive vehicles, are absolutely crammed with electronic control systems, data networks and so forth. You, you generally see the premium automobiles having the, the most sophisticated systems deployed in them first. For instance, uh, engine management systems, anti-lock braking systems, airbag deployment and so on. 
started their life in the premium automobile market and have, have now become, if, if you like, standard fit within the, the standard sort of uh, motor industry. So what challenges do you now face now cars like this are getting even more complex? Premium automobile like this has typically well over 50 separate onboard electronic control units connected by multiple data networks. Uh, as more and more functionality is deployed within the vehicle, uh, we're seeing more and more of these electronic control systems uh, introduced into the vehicle and the vehicle systems are becoming so complicated, the scale and the size of them, the amount of data that's transmitting around the vehicle at any one time, that we need to improve our methods in terms of diagnostics and design and integration and systems engineering to be able to cope with this increasing complexity. So Mark, let's take a closer look at this automotive diagnostic system that you've got here. It's quite a piece of equipment, isn't it? It is. This is known as a lab car. So this is a bare frame representation of the electrical systems of the vehicle that you've just seen. And it illustrates the, the level of complexity that we're now seeing in the modern premium automobiles. You can see the electrical systems, the electronic control units, the sensors, actuators, and the various data networks that you see traveling around the vehicle. So it gives a, a good sort of overview of just how complex these systems have now become. And you're able to activate this remotely? In terms of being able to exercise the functionality, then yes, we're looking at ways we can actually get into the vehicle, exercise the functionality through some remote or some automated links uh, with a view to enabling us to improve the way we diagnose these increasingly complex systems. And this is a, a special setup, isn't it, being able to view a car like this? Indeed, yes. This is probably unique. I'm not sure or not aware of many university facilities that would have such a, a facility like this, such a lab car. Uh, we're very, very fortunate to have Jaguar Land Rover as our main partners in the research programmes that we do, and they've generously donated this equipment for us for our research purposes. Uh, as you can see, it's uh, quite a, a piece of equipment. The, the, the level of complexity becomes apparent only when you see the vehicle without its panelling, without its trim, and without its skin. Uh, and it illustrates just how much we have to up our game, if you like, in terms of diagnostic capability in order to be able to cope with these increasingly complex systems. And that's where a lot of the research work that my team is involved in is focused in how we improve the design, the development, the validation and the diagnostics of these increasingly complex automotive systems. Jimmy, you've been working on this new diagnostic system. This is effectively what garages have. Yes, this is a traditional diagnostic system, which is normally used in a garage. When you get problems in your car, you get your car in your garage, and they plug this special tool to the car and read diagnostic tubal codes out, and then they can find out the problem in your car. And you can see here, List, this is a list of the code which are read from the vehicle. So what does this mean for manufacturers with and garages even who are having to deal with things like car warranties? The simple example is that it's called no fault file problems. If you come get the vehicle to the garage and they can't see, can't find the cause of the faults and they just try to replace the components and send components back to the suppliers and later on suppliers do not know either where exactly the fault is so that's increased the warranty cost. It would be excellent if Jaguar had a self-healing vehicle. I think it would be a great opportunity for the business and for the customer who buys a fault-free vehicle. The beneficiaries will be the customer the beneficiaries will be the manufacturer and the beneficiaries will be the suppliers to the manufacturer. It is quite feasible that a self-healing vehicle could, in some form could be in the market within the next five to ten years. The work we're doing is essentially the first steps that could actually lead to, to, to that capability.